In part two of today's show, we're going to look at how to get a good, clean key off of your Blackmagic ATEM switcher. Good morning and welcome back to part two of the show. If you did not see part one, part one we talked about this Reflect Media incredible green screen technology uh, just to understand how it works. We did that in part one. If you haven't seen that, do watch that first and then come back to this. In this video, we're talking about how to get a good key off of your Blackmagic ATEM switcher. So for those who are new to the show, you may not know that this whole thing, all these different camera switching, goes through a Blackmagic ATEM, which is a big, expensive hardware box that allows me all kinds of cool switching and, and um, keying and all kinds of other things. And this is what it looks like. This is my interface to it, rather, not the actual physical box itself. But that's what my interface looks like to this thing. And uh, it's, <laughs> it's, I'm still figuring this thing out. It's kind of a crazy, crazy piece of tech. But one of the things that the ATEM can do is it can do a real-time key, which means if you're shooting something on a green screen or blue screen or really anything, red screen, whatever, you can have the ATEM key that out. By keying it, that means it removes the background, removes everything that is that color so that you can put something else there in its place. And you see this all the time on like weather channel, weather shows, you know, you've got your newscaster standing in front of what looks like this huge TV. What they're really standing in front of is a huge green screen and then there's graphics replaced, uh, placed behind them. And you know, it's green screen stuff is everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. So when I first started playing with this Reflect Media setup and getting it working for um, for this particular show, I wanted to do a live key, which you saw in the first part of this. And uh, it took a little while to figure out how to get the best clean key off of the ATEM. Now, I'd love to take credit for figuring out what I'm going to show you today, but, um, but it's just what's in the manual, actually. But I'd never seen it before, and I thought it was so cool that I wanted to show you guys how to do it. Because let's face it, who actually reads manuals anymore? So, Ryan, can you uh, come on over here? Stand over there, please. So we've got here, there's my, my green screen setup, right? So that is right now, just so you know what we're looking at. I've got the camera that it's pointing at him is over here. It's got the green screen on it, uh, the green LEDs on it. Obviously, Ryan is standing in front of the gray backdrop that we showed in the last show, and he is therefore now nicely greened out. So the obvious thing to do is just to go in there and put something behind it on the background layer, if you will, and then start playing with the key settings and the spill and everything else to try and get it right. So we're going to start with that, but then we're going to go to a better way to do this. Incidentally, for those of you watching live, if you do have any questions about it, throw them up on the screen at any time. We will come back to a live Q&A at the end of the show, so we'll do a, a separate Q&A section. But if you think of a question, drop it in there now. Don't worry about it. We'll get to it when, uh, when, when it's time for that. Okay, so I am going to first show you how this is, the basic setup is done in the, uh, in the switcher. Now, I would like to actually show this to you live. But the problem is that when I'm showing this to you live, if I click on something, it's going to actually change what you're seeing. So I can't really do that. It's a little bit kind of funny that way. So what I've done is I've set up a screenshot. So this is just a screenshot so I can illustrate the steps that are needed. So if you think of this like a, a Photoshop document, Photoshop layers, that's essentially what this is. You've got a it, but now it's just two layers. You've got a background layer and a layer on top. The layer on top is the one that has the green screen or blue screen that we're going to key out, build a mask for that. But the mask is built in real time. That's the beauty of this whole live keying thing. So that's on top. We build a mask for that green or blue, and then you see whatever is on the background layer. So that's pretty much all there is to that. So over here, this is how we're going to start. This mix effects one is what we're doing. This is my program out. That's what you will be seeing live. And I'm going to load up Media Player 2, MP2, which is just going to be a simple graphic. It is going to be, let's see here, go back to... This page, it is going to be this graphic here. Let me load that into place. So that's what's going to be there in the background, this little kind of trees scene. And then over here under uh, where it says next transition, we're using key. There's two keys on here. There's two upstream keys, key one and key two. We're using key one. We enable that, and then this third button here, the number three, that's for putting it actually live on air, which is what you're going to see. What this is putting on air is right here. It's the upstream key. That's number four. And within the upstream key, you have four different key types. You can do a luma key, chroma, pattern, or a DVE key. We're doing a chroma key. That's the color. And then we finally set the fill source. What is that top layer that is going to be keyed out? In this case, it's going to be the camera called Studio One. That's the camera that's on wheels. It's got the green rings around it that is shining at Ryan right there. So that's what we're going to be looking at. And then underneath that, step seven is the adjustments. So choosing the hue for that and then gain, Y suppression, and lift. All these different things that you can do to play with the settings on there. So I am going to, I just realized one thing that I forgot to do. Let me pull up my, um, my guide to what these different uh, sliders mean because it's, 
it's kind of one of those things you can just play with it all day long, but of course, if you understand it a little bit more, it might help to, to actually get it dialed in straight quickly. So let me actually do that very quickly first. So you've got hue, gain, Y suppression, and lift. Hue is obviously the color. That's the easy one. So you dial it in to match the color as closely as you can to what's in the background there. The gain adjustment determines how the colors around the selected hue are keyed. So it's basically a, a range, if you will. You choose this color, how much other color around it is going to be selected as well. The Y suppression is the, adjust the black level, basically making the, the black level of what's being keyed lower or higher. And you'll see quite quickly how that affects the, uh, the overall look. And then um, the lift, which is normally set to zero. For a clean key, you're normally at zero. But if you're getting some spill, um, some oversaturation, some other weird things happening, you can play with that a little bit. But usually we leave that alone. And then the last one on there is uh, the narrow chroma key range. So if you have a super, super precise key, uh, you can you can do that, and it'll actually narrow the range instead of broadening it. So you have a very very clean. But you yeah, got to be really really precise with it. So we're not going to be doing that today. So essentially, you're playing with the sliders until it looks right. So that's what we're looking at. So um, let's see here. I am going to start by bringing up the. Let's see. Let's get the right one up here. Let's bring up the studio camera. I am going to. And this is the part that you can't see right now. Um, go to my switcher. I'm going to put the media player. There, we're gonna put the key on top of it. We're starting to get there, take the gain down. There we go, we're kinda of getting there. We're kinda of getting there, take that up. There we go, that's, you know, we're getting close. Okay, so now we've got a, now it's close. But you're like, all right, I'll, there's so much detail, right? How do I know, it should it be, that's a little darker. What, how do I get it exactly right? And that's, that's the hard part of doing it this way. So, the way that we're gonna do it instead is instead of putting a person there that we're trying to key against and look at the background, we're gonna get rid of the person altogether. Ryan, you are dismissed, thank you very much. We're gonna get rid of Ryan, and instead of putting behind the green just a scene, we're gonna put bars and tone. Well, not tone, we're gonna put bars, color bars in there. And then instead of just looking at it with our eye, we're gonna look at it on scopes so we can see exactly where the colors are. See, so here's, here's what happens here. So now let me, let me switch over. I've got this set up so that I'm pointing my camera, I know you're getting an echo effect now, but we're pointing the camera at my Blackmagic uh, Ninja, uh, Ninja Assassin on here. And these are the, we've got the scopes up here. So that will allow me to see, for me to see exactly what the colors look like on here. Now, I'm going to put tones, on, uh, put bars on there right now. And the way I'm gonna do that is on the Blackmagic um, ATEM, I can choose any camera. So right now, that's the demo camera. That's what's on air right now. That's the laptop. But BMD1, that is my main camera. I have the ability under here to set show color bars. And if I enable that and then I switch back to my camera, you see this instead of seeing me. OK, so that's on there. Let me put that up on screen now. So you can see in here that we've got this perfect grid because we have the perfect bars on here. So the objective is to throw the green screen on top of this and key it out until we get exactly this, which means that the green has completely gone away. So now I'm, that means I'm gonna go back into my switcher setup and I'm going to enable the key on top of this. I'm going to kind of reset everything. So there's, there we go, get this kind of dialed in a little bit. So we're looking at, so now you're seeing the green and effectively here what I wanna do is move this around, find the right color until, to key out until I see those color points all centered. So you can see like here, I've chosen the wrong hue. See how that's off center on there? And there's the wrong hue, it's off center. So I'm gonna find just the right center point. Now I can also see how these points here are not reaching all the way out to their targets. So now I need to go into the gain and adjust the gain until they are hitting their targets. And I don't wanna go too far, see my Y suppression is up. Let me take my Y suppression down. Let me reset that back to its default position. There we go. I don't wanna to go too far. So basically I wanna go just far enough. So let me pull it down. It comes out, it comes out, it comes out. It hits these points. Now I'm only at 58.9% gain. If I keep on dragging out, it makes no difference in there. And you might think, well, just drag it up all the way. But no, because that's gonna spill out in other places we don't want. So essentially we wanna get this down until it comes, so it pulls in, there we go, and then back up back up and you can actually click on the numbers on the interface and use them uh, use the keyboard as well to kind of adjust those a little bit more finely. Okay, so there's that. But now we can look at the black on here. We see that our black is not looking very good. So this is where the Y suppress comes in. So now I adjust my Y suppress until that becomes actually black. You're like, okay, well it looks black, but is that actually black? So here's what I'll do. So I'm gonna load up, I'm gonna switch over to the waveform. 
And now, let me back off on the Y suppress. You can see there how that wasn't black, how it's not clean. Now, as I take my Y suppress up, I can get that to the point where that is looking totally black. And so if I go I back up one level, looks good. Next level down, looks great. I keep going down and we're not gaining anything. So I'm gonna back up, back up. So now from here also, I can look at these others and I can see that my white's a little bit, a little bit dirty in there. So I'm gonna play with the gain just a tiny bit, tiny, tiny raise the gain, just a little fraction. And that made that clean as well. So now I've got clean. My bars are looking the way they should here. My bars are looking the way that they should here. And now I feel like I have a clean key. So let me switch the feed back over to the proper camera. And that's what we've built. Okay, so now that we've built that, now that I've dialed that in, I can, and I have to do this all manually. I can't use any of my, my macros now because they'll reprogram all the colors that I just dialed in. But now that I've built that in, I can, let's set up a manual stack again. I'm going to load up the MP2. So there's that background. I'm gonna make sure that the key is on. The key is in fact on top of it. And so that's looking great. That's looking proper. So now let's put me in the background. So I am putting, I'm going to load my main view. There we go. So there's me. That's actually the background, right? If I take off the key, I'm right now, I know you can't see it, but I'm toggling that top layer on and off. And we're not really seeing anything happen there, right? But here's how I know that it's an actual key. Here's how I know that it's actually working. Check that out. So this is actually working. Now, if I go up against the wall here, we got a nice clean key. Now, again, this is a real-time keyer. It's not you know, super, super accurate. It's not the most magical thing in the world. It's not as good as taking it to Final Cut or After Effects or a dedicated software keyer. But for real-time, this is looking pretty good. So now we've got a good, clean key on this. So that's how you set up your Blackmagic ATEM to do a key. You definitely want to go in and use the bars and tone technique. It is in the manual, um, but again, I know nobody reads that thing. It's like the biggest PDF ever. So uh, but now that you know that it's there, go check it out. Make sure you got the steps right. But putting it up on scopes like that um, absolutely massively helps and allows you to get that really clean key and know that you've hit the target and you're not overshooting it. So that, my friends, is that. So from here, we're going to take another short break and come back with the final cut portion of this, where we're going to record some video on a GH5 and then take that into Final Cut Pro and uh, run a little keying software on there and see how it looks. We'll see you back here in just a moment.